Well, I supervise the supervisors. You know, we have multiple branches within the National Hurricane Center, our Hurricane Specialist Unit, our Tropical Analysis and Forecast Branch, the Marine Forecasters that work all year, night and day, and our Technology and Science Branch. And so I guide the, uh, the folks who run those branches, and I get involved in some of the details as necessary that go on in each of those areas of the office, and also do a lot of external engagement. So I'm involved in the forecast and the warning process and getting the word out through the media and emergency management briefings, and also giving us uh, internal direction for where we're going to go in the future with our, our services and our products, and utilizing external input and engagement. We also have that international responsibility. Right. The National Hurricane Center is what is called an RSMC, a Regional Specialized Meteorological Center, mm -hmm. designated by the WMO, the World Meteorological Organization, an arm of the United Nations. So we have an official international responsibility to provide forecasts to the areas of the Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean, Atlantic Basin, and also the Eastern Pacific. Uh, now, the, the individual countries provide their own warnings for themselves, and they do issue their own local forecasts, but they rely on us for the big picture forecast, much like our local forecast offices do here. But the, the international relationship is unique because it involves uh, off-season engagement and uh, planning for what the overall uh, set of products and services and warnings are going to be throughout the basin. And there's an outreach component, and then during the event, you know, they're providing us some data, we're providing them guidance. It's a really good relationship with many countries involved. The biggest challenge I think we all face is getting the right information into the hands of individuals to help them understand in the off-season what hazards from a hurricane or tropical storm they need to plan for preparedness-wise, and what hazards are they facing at their location when a storm or hurricane is approaching. Because all of these bulk parameters, these numbers, these categories, these, these tags, these names we put on uh, storms, don't tell people what they are facing in this particular storm. And so we are moving toward a larger collection of products and warnings and services that get at specific individual hazards, wind, surge, rain, tornadoes, and what locations are vulnerable to those hazards. You know, we, we live in an information overloaded society with multiple media outlets. How many channels do you have on your cable or satellite system now? How many different websites can you go to? And then there's all the social media uh, activity. Now I see things like social media as tremendous tools, not fads, really tremendous tools for communication. Now that particular avenue doesn't reach everybody, but for example, I see you know, mass media, television and website folks who can utilize social media to get information and then convey that to people who might not be on social media. One really important example is that Twitter is a really good tool for emergency management information in a timely official fashion to get to mass media like television. So even if you don't follow anybody on Twitter or even use it, the television folks can use Twitter to get official information from emergency managers to get, get that into the hands of uh, people who uh, just watch television. So we are in Facebook, we're in Twitter, we are still doing television because television is still the main way people, most people get their information for a hurricane or a tropical storm. So we're trying not to spread ourselves too thin and, and go after those key uh, avenues to get information out. Uh, we learn from every hurricane season, we learn from every storm how we might be able to improve our services for the future. And for years and years, we've had this end of season meeting, the NOAA hurricane meeting, to get together and figure out what went right, what went wrong, what can we improve. And some of those things are ideas or problems we've been trying to address for years and years. And so as we head into 2013, we've got some things specific to Sandy that we think we're going to be able to make some changes based on. And we have some other things that we're going to change or move toward changing based on ideas and experiences we've had for more than a decade. So Sandy, what it brought forth particularly was uh, a challenge on how to handle a system that's going to lose its tropical characteristics. We knew that was going to happen. We didn't know exactly when that was going to happen. So it was another layer of forecast uncertainty that challenged our product and warning suite. But 
uh, based on what we end up hearing from the Sandy Service Assessment, I, and I think we're going to hear some positive reviews on the, on the idea to give ourselves more options, to have more flexibility in using NHC advisories, hurricane and tropical storm warnings, even when a system goes post-tropical, so that this transition in the meteorological world is more transparent, more seamless to the user, if that is the best way to handle it in a given situation. It's not mandating we're going to do it differently than Sandy in the future, but it gives us more options. And then along the lines of things we've been thinking about for a long time that Sandy and Isaac and even Debbie just reinforced is we need to have a better collection of products and warnings for storm surge. And so by 2015, we've now set a target date after the 2012 season of 2015 to have a new storm surge watch and warning in place because wind and surge don't always happen in the same place at the same time. Just think back to Ike, how the water started rising well before the winds got there. So surge des deserves its own watch and warning and we're headed there.